Good afternoon. <laughs> the Coalition of the African American Museum Library in Oakland is preserving your life story for history. You want to get started by telling us who you are and introducing yourself? My name is Maury Turner. I changed my, my name is Morris, actually I was born Morris, but I changed it to Maury. I, I, I took my son's name. <laughs> Everybody called him Maury and I said, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So when I restarted the cartoon, I changed it to Maury. So I'm 80 years old, I was, it always shocked me to say that. I'm 80 years old, I'm a Sagittarian for some people in the house that I admire. Okay. And I've been cartooning for 39 years. 39 years syndicated. You were, were you born here in, in uh, the area? I was born in West Oakland. West Oakland, I've been living in Berkeley since 19, just before the war, 1942, yeah. I think it was. We moved into this house. I had four brothers at the time, all deceased now, and two pet my parents. We moved in this house in 1942. My dad was a Pullman porter at the time. And uh, one of the retired Pullman porters became a, a, a realtor and helped my dad buy this house a total of three thousand dollars, I think, and helped him helped him get the, a loan for the down payment of the house. Mm -hmm. Two bedrooms, three thousand dollars, unbelievable. Yeah. Well, that was the going price in those days. How was it uh, growing up with a family of four boys, your brothers? You said you had four brothers. Yeah, uh, and I was the youngest, and it was kind of nice um, because they all took care of me. You know. I, I never had a fight in my life. Uh, well, at least I take that back. I never had a, a fight as a child. I, uh, because my brothers were such battlers, the Turner bad Turner brothers. And the only fight I ever had was when I went into the service, and the guy didn't, the guy hadn't heard of the Turner brothers, <laughs> so I found out I couldn't fight. So I began to use humor as, a, as, a, as a, to handle my arguments that way. Okay. Yeah. Good. And that's how I, I got into doing cartoons for a living. I mean, for, you know, using cartoons as a as a means was a, was in the service, and I found out that you could draw cartoons and not uh, march all day long. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so you went to schools also in this area. Elementary. Oh, I went to school. I went to school in West in West Oakland, Cole School, Cole Elementary School. And then to McClymonds, and then I left McClymonds. I left because we we I was still going to McClymonds when we moved to this house here mm -hmm. in Berkeley, and then I got a little trouble. And uh, a friend you of mine, tell us about it? I don't mind telling you about <laughs> that at all. A friend of mine, um, I won't even call his name. He, <laughs> he said we should we were going to go up. To, we were going to go up to. Uh, Tech and see some girls, okay. and he said, "How are we going to get there?" He said, "Some guys that the guys promised to loan us their bicycles." So yeah, I, I believed them. We <laughs> got on, the, got the bicycles, and we're riding up MacArthur Boulevard. There were three of us okay. in a row, and we were stopped by the police, wondering why we weren't in school, and then, uh, and. In the meantime, ask about the bicycles. Well, the bicycle, he had just taken the bicycle. And when we got back to the school, the, we brought into the principal's office, and the principal decided that it must have been me. I was one of the Turner brothers, one of the bad Turner brothers. Okay. So when I got home and told my mother, and I was suspended right away, you know, so I came home and explained to my mother what had happened. He said, you're not going back to McClymonds, you're going to Berkeley High. Why? Right. So you graduated from Berkeley High? I graduated from Berkeley High, against my will. I wanted to graduate. I had gone to all, all the grades with, this, with the same people. Okay, yeah. Was it but, hard making new friends at coming to Berkeley High? I met, I met my future wife. Okay. So that wasn't bad. Uh, okay. Yeah. And mother of my children, my, ch my kid and my grandchildren. So. Did you, um, what did you do after high school? What was your, uh, did you go to college or did you go to 
Well, no, I was, I was less than a year. I, I worked for a little while, I worked at the uh, Oakland Army Base as a, well, it was a strange job because it's the greatest job I ever had. I didn't realize it was my first job. My, I, was, I worked at night, midnight to eight in the morning, and I, worked, and I was going to school. And my job was to answer the phone when it rang at night. And then there was, I had a whole list of people to call in case of emergency. And uh, I never received a phone call. Most boring job. <laughs> what I should have done is, is drawn or to yeah. do something, you know, but I didn't think about that. I read that you've been drawing since you were 10 years old. Yeah, okay. yeah. Drawing has always been my means of communication. And drawing, drawing, I started drawing comic strips in a way. You remember the butcher paper that the butchers used oh, to use? Yeah. That was my first drawing paper. Okay. And we used to go to the butcher with quite some frequency, once a month and once a, once a week. Okay. So I would always ask for the extra paper. So the butchers would keep me supplied in paper. Now there weren't, there wasn't television in those days. There was, but there was great radio shows. So you, you got a chance to use your imagination. You, you listen to the radio and you, you heard all of this, the, the Thin Man and, uh, and well, well, all kinds of shows around that time. And then I would listen to these shows and draw what I think I was hearing. You know? So that was the develop my own imagination. So it said in, in some of the literature that by the time you were 14, you decided you were going to be a cartoonist. Yeah, I yeah. did. As soon as I found out what, what, that there was such a thing <laughs> as cartooning. I mean, I knew we, we could cartoon, but I didn't know there was people, people making a living cartooning. I should have known with seeing the animation of Disney, but I, I never, never, never put the two things that. together, no. How did your family feel about that decision? Uh, not good. <laughs> not, not good at all. My father, thought, my father thought that was a little sissified, okay. guys drawing. And my mother thought it was nice. My mother, without my, my mother loved my work. My mother would put my work up. My dad would take it down. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I would draw. You remember in uh, Sunday school, you, you used to give us these these cards with uh, religious cards with yes, uh, I do with sayings on them, and and I used to take these cards and draw them. I'd take crayon, and I wonder now how I did it. I would take old curtains okay. because I somehow I thought that was had something like canvas. I didn't know better, <laughs> but I never asked questions. Okay. So I I take those 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 curtains and repro reproduce those drawings of those from the uh, those cards. Okay. On the, the religious drawings, and my mother, being a very religious person, I did, did all these colors, and the flowing of those robes and the shadows on those robes, which was exquisite. So I just loved to do those. Yeah. Okay. You know, when I was in, uh, I, I was in San Diego. I, I don't know when I saw a, a drawing. I had a religious drawing, Jesus kneeling, and I did it on in charcoal and and blue paint. And it was the darnest thing I've ever seen. Oh, wow. And I did it. Oh, and I did that. If I hadn't signed it, I wouldn't have recognized it. Okay. And I don't know, I wonder why I did it, because I did, I hadn't done a, a drawing like that in many, many years. When you finally decided that you wanted to be a cartoonist, how did you go about getting started? Uh, I went to, to, to uh, the newsstand and started looking at, uh, at magazines to see what, see that they had cartoons in them, you know. Mm -hmm. And I would just read the cartoons and see what kind of cartoons they were, and then go to the front of the, the magazine to get the address of the, of the, and send them cartoons, and they would send it right back. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd find some more and I'd send out again, and they would send them right back. It was, I did that for about a year before I sold a cartoon. You said when you were getting all those letters back, there was one letter in particular that was significant to you. Um, 
was a handwritten letter. Could you tell us about that? Oh, that was, no, that was uh, uh, my writing to, see, I had decided that I was going to be a cartoonist. Okay. And my mother said I was the greatest cartoonist that ever lived. Well, that's what mother's supposed to say. I don't even know if she knew what a cartoonist was. So I decided I would write the, 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 the greatest cartoonist I ever knew, that I knew, was Milk Kniff. And um, I have some of his work on the, on the walls here. And I asked him, did I have any ability at all? Could I become a cartoonist? And he wrote me that, yes, you know, you do have any. He wrote me a six-page letter. Oh, wow. Now, this was I didn't appreciate it as much as I do now because I didn't know how busy a cartoonist was oh. and, how, and how, 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 you know, how open, how many people in his life, you know. So I didn't realize until I became a cartoonist what that, that letter meant to me, what, what it really meant. And then he became a friend of mine through the years because uh, when I finally made it, I told him, I wrote him, and you remember me? I'm the guy that you, you know, and I finally made it. And we became, we stayed friends right up until the, the, the day he died. In fact, I was in, I came and went to Palm Springs, my wife and I, when she was alive, went to Palm Springs to a period at a high school there to make a presentation. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the presentation, the students were, we were in a circle, just hobnobbing, and I saw this guy coming toward me. And the fact that I had been to a lot of schools, I, and I'm in a school, and I'm trying to figure out what school I had met this guy before, because yeah, I knew him. Mm -hmm. And when he got to me, and then I really knew who he was. It was Milk Kniff. The, yeah, he, he lived in, in Palm Springs and um, had a chance to spend the day, the day with him, he and his wife, Bunny. You wonderful, know. wonderful. When you first started in your uh, career, uh, what was the turning point? What was the starting point that you can remember? When you starting really point? Off? Well, the first oh, the year took off? Paid for. Oh, the first comic <laughs> I got paid for after that year. People said, well, ooh, I said, look, I got, I sold this cartoon. Well, how much you get paid? I said, that's not important. <laughs> that's not important. <laughs> I got about $5, I think. <laughs> okay. Okay. But it was really important to me. Yeah, yeah, do you remember what that was, what that cartoon was? Yeah, it was called, it was called uh, Baker's, uh, oh, God. Baker's Helper, I think it was called, yeah. Okay. And uh, it was, I remember the cartoon itself. It was the, the, the bakers was in the baker shop. These guys had made a, 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 a wedding cake. Had the two couples, you know, sitting on the cake. Oh, okay. And had the father with a gun behind them. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty good. Five dollars. I yeah, was pretty good. yeah. I'll never forget that. At uh, one point, you were working for the police department. Yeah. What was that all about? Well, I, I had to work. I had oh, a, okay. I needed to have a job. Yeah, so, $5. so freelancing, freelancing wasn't paying that much. Okay. Yeah. So I, I worked for the, I worked as a police clerk, and, uh, and while I was there, I did some work for the, the cartoon work for the, for yeah, on their, for their, um, their studies. You know their. Okay. Yeah. How did yeah, turn out? The rate safety stuff and oh, some of that. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, where do you get your ideas from for your comic strips? Exactly. Where do your ideas come for your comic strips? I drink a lot. <laughs> no. <laughs> ideas, not hallucinations. <laughs> no, no I, I, I read, I read. Uh, and you, you read and you, you play with words. You know, you, you, sometimes you I pick up a dictionary sometimes and just look for a word. That looks funny, and I, and I I don't know what it means, and I try to think what it means before I I I, I read that what it does mean. Then I play with that word, okay. and many times uh, ideas will come from that. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think of an example. I just had one. Uh, it'll come to me. Okay. You, you do a lot of uh, um, comics about social commentary about current events of the day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that's important. Yeah, that's important. I, I, read, I read two 
news magazines every week. Oh, okay. And so I used that as a springboard, you know. Uh, but uh, I w it was better. It was better when there was a civil rights movement. I mean, there was, I, oh, I was, I, there was so much going on. I was, yeah. And that's when I started. I started in 1965, February 1965. It was a rainy day that day. <laughs> I remember that day well. Too. And things were keep, things kept happening. And as, as they happened, I could, I could use that as, as uh, my material. Unfortunately, we're not, the civil rights movement is, He's dead, you know? so there's not. Uh, okay. So I do, okay. I I do things on tolerance. Um, yeah, there's a, 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 a saying attributed to you called rainbow power. Yeah. What's that all about? That's the power. Uh, well, let me explain it. Okay. Kids, let me go back to how it began. Okay. I I started using. You know, there was black power, and, and yes. then I started using gray power for, okay. for, the, for the, the elderly, and then um, uh, red power for the Native American, mm -hmm. green power for the money, okay. uh, brown power for the Latinos, red power for the Native American, mm -hmm. yellow power for the Asian. So all the kids, you know, started doing the same thing, because so, I've got kids of all of these ethnic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So how did they come together? Well, and then I had Ralph in there who would say, white power, you know. Okay. And so I had Nipper, and Nipper, of course, is me. Anytime, oh, okay. anytime Nipper speaks, it's me. Right. And, and in fact, when I want to say, I say it through Nipper. Sometimes it is, but mostly never. And he said, listen, you're all going off in different directions. And he said, never, what do you suggest? He said, how about rainbow power? Mm. He said, that's right. the power of all colors working together. Mm -hmm. And that's where that came from. Now, let me tell you uh, the story that how I found out. I didn't know that I was doing this through Nipper. Okay. Had no idea, and I was talking to my mother, who was oh, she was about 94 at the time, and she used to use one of these little sticks to read, you know, what do you call it? Uh, um, like a like a ruler. Or? It's a glass, uh, oh, magnifying, magnifying glass. glass. Okay. When you get my age, that's okay. <laughs> those things disappear. So she used the magnifying glass, and she wanted to tell me something about Nipper, and he said, and but she couldn't think of his name, and she kept saying, you know, you know the one, and he said, you know the one, and she said, the one that's you, <laughs> and it hit me. I did know, the, I did know what she was talking about, okay. Nipper, and she knew that Nipper was me before I did. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you've been quoted as saying that you focus on real people. Yeah. Uh, people that we normally don't hear about. Um, you mean in my soul corner? people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think that uh, I, I, I purposely shy away from, you know, entertainers mostly and uh, Athletes, unless they've done something very specific, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. or unless they particularly local, and uh, you know. Uh, but uh, there's so many things that 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 we do that we, so many contribution that we make to our to our uh, our way of living. That I think we all need to know about it, and I, I'm making it my job. Now, how that came about it might be interesting. Is the syndicate told me that I had to, I had to make a, what is called a dropout panel. That's a panel that you drop out, you, you write a Sunday page in such a manner that you can drop out three panels without it being missed. The reason for that is because different newspapers have different sizes. Okay. So I couldn't master that. I just couldn't master it. So I said, I'll make my dropout panel separate and make it another entity. So I started doing a lot of different things. I would with a gag a day. I have four different gags in there on different subjects. Okay. And then um, I kept doing that. And then 
black, they used to have Black History Week. Oh, yeah. Black History Week started on uh, Lincoln's birthday and concluded on Frederick Douglass's birthday. You remember that? A lot of people don't know that. I don't, I don't, I don't remember. A lot of people didn't know how that started, and that's how it started. Um, um, so I decided that I was going to do Black History just, you know, during that week. And, and, I, and it had such a re response, it was so positive, I said, I'll keep doing this. And I said, well, first, I said, you know, not, I wasn't that attuned to black history myself. I said, well, how long can I do this, you know? Maybe I can do this a year, you know? And I kept doing it and doing it. And then I suddenly realized, as I'm doing it, history is being made. You know, people, yeah. and so, yeah. and then I got worried about, um, because I'm working 13 weeks in advance. A lot of things can change in 13 weeks. Mm -hmm. So I decided at the beginning, I was just going to deal with people who are already dead. And they can't, <laughs> and they can't trip me up, you know. Yeah. But one dead person tripped me up. <laughs> Harriet Tubman. Oh, really? I, okay. Yeah, I read in, the, in somewhere, I read in two different places that she was buried in, 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 with full military honors in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, I get a, a letter from a cemetery in upstate New York saying, <laughs> she's here. <laughs> it's a, pictures and everything. <laughs> Inviting me to come see. Okay. That's okay. I'll, I'll take your word for it. And you know, I, I wrote letters to the people, the, the books that I got the information from, I never got a thank you. Or, in fact, those books have been republished and then without a change in them. You so, mentioned Nipper being you in, in your comic strip. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any other characters that are members of your family? Oh, yeah. Sybil. Sybil writes. Did you ever notice how Sybil writes is spelled? Uh, no. How is it spelled? S Y B I L. Okay. Okay. W R I G H T. Now, you know, okay. what does it mean? What does What does that mean? Civil rights. Okay. Civil, Civil rights. rights. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. That's my little. Okay. So that's who. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that okay. was that's uh, my wife. Okay. That's that's uh, her personality. Her yeah. yeah. Tough. Okay. <laughs> Tough lady. Anybody Smart, know? but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, Mickey. Mickey is my my granddaughter, and Mickey was was born the the, the very night that the real Mickey was born. My son called and said, uh, very good. "Yeah, that yeah. baby was born." I said, "I said, well, what are you gonna call her?" He said, "Michelle," and I said, "Well, they'll probably call her Mickey." And then I decided, well, I'll spell it the way Nikki Giovanni spells her name. So. Okay. So, so Nikki, Mickey is now, Nikki has a little, she's grown and married and has a six month old baby herself. Mm -hmm. That's her own little Mickey. Yeah. That's nice, man. It's time for another character. <laughs> well, I keep playing around with, the, the, with new characters, and, but I can't, to, to balance it out, I just can't. You, you know. do a lot of things with, with children. Children are. It's your your comic strip is about children. Yeah, I, you've never seen an uh, you never seen an adult on the, okay. my my strip. I got that from Schultz, Charles Schultz, who draws Peanuts. Okay. He, uh, a lot of a lot of what I do is is pattern after what he did. Because when I started, uh, uh, you have to know that I started. Well, I met him. I also met him years ago, and, and that's he led to my decision to do what I'm doing. Yeah. It, it's been so popular, mm -hmm. and, and I love the strip, my favorite strip. And I said, you know, and I thought I could think along with him. So I said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a whole black, I'm gonna do a black Peanuts. Okay. And that's what I set out to do. Mm -hmm. And Nipper was the first character and some other characters. And I, I sold it. I sold it to Chicago Daily Defender, the black newspaper, one of the, yes, yes. the only black daily newspaper in the country. Mm -hmm. And that's, and as I'm, and you gotta know that 
while all this was going on, I'm I'm part of the the, the cartoon community okay. through my freelance work and and I'm saying to everybody at this time, you should integrate your strip. You should have some black kids in your strip. You should do this because I don't know if you remember, all comic strips were about white people, yes. totally. Yes. You couldn't find. Once in a while, you found a black person, but it was solid black and it had white lips. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was not nothing you, could, you wanted your mother to see. Right. Right. So I would, I was campaigning to, for them to make a change, and here I'm sitting in and doing a strip in Chicago, all black. Mm -hmm. Well, if I'm going to keep lipping off about that, then maybe I better better t do the same thing. So that's when I integrated, quote unquote, my own strip. Okay. So smartest thing I ever did in my life. Yes. Uh, and somebody saw it, called me. That's not how syndicates are, or operate usually. They don't call you to, to do a strip, but uh, that's what happened to me. Mm. Good. I know from person's personal experience that you do a lot of drawings and you give them away yeah, to I people. Do. Yeah, I um, do. Does that hurt your profit, or uh, do you think about anything like that? Or? I've never thought about that. I, I've never thought about that. I'm, sometimes I'm surprised that people will, 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 will sell the work to, to make money for, like, the, like SPCA. I give them drawings every year for that, and okay. different groups that, okay. uh, that auction off stuff. Oh, yes. For yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, I and I just like to draw. When when did you first become syndicated? Uh, February the fifteenth, nineteen sixty-five. And that means syndication means. I that. think that's oh syndication means that uh, there were about eight syndicates in the country, mm. and what they do is they supply all the newspapers throughout uh, the country with. Uh, Cartoon material, um, uh, short stories, puzzles, the whole works. Yeah. All the feature, all the feature stuff. And they sign you to contract, and then they set out to try to sell as many, many newspapers as they can. Okay. Yeah. And that's syndication. Okay. Yeah. Which is what most cartoonists strive for. A lot of cartoonists don't want to do it, but most cartoonists strive for, mainly because you're in charge. I mean, mainly because you, yeah, they take what you. Okay. Okay. They um, proofread and correct and, and say, you see if they make suggestions now okay. and then. Um, yeah. But you can take them or not take them. Huh? Well, they can do that, too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I read somewhere that you had never really officially attended art school. No, Is I haven't. That correct? That's okay. correct. Okay. Uh, Do you have any regrets about that? No, okay. no. <laughs> I ended up teaching. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. so yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Now you you have written a couple books. So when did you oh, start yeah. writing books? Oh, not long after uh, uh, syndication. Not long after they started, first thing they, the first thing, the first books I had were just collections of, of, of material that had already been published. They just collected them and put them in, in books. So I was doing two books a year that way. Then I started to think about ideas that were my own, you know. So I, whenever I think of an idea, I, I have to do it. Sometimes I don't don't sell the book, but, mm -hmm. okay. but I have to get it out of my system. Right. Yeah. I'm doing two right now. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to ask you about that, but I want to ask you another question right now. Um, how many black cartoonists are there? Now there are seven. There's seven? Yeah. Uh, seven or eight. Them? When I started, yeah. um, when I started, the there was one. Okay. There was one, and he, nobody knew about him. No, nobody knew he was black because... Okay. E. Sims Campbell, and nobody knew he was black. Uh, he worked for King Features, and he had to—he he had to draw uh, 
some all a thing he called cuties. He, he couldn't draw. It was all white people, oh, okay. all white white girls, in fact. Okay. Um, okay. Because they they wouldn't they didn't want anybody to know he was black. Okay. Um, and then you started. I started. I'm the first one to do uh, uh, a black character. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then it just laid dormant for about two years, mm. two or three years, and then slowly but surely. Uh, How many are there now? About seven or eight. About seven. And one black woman. That's all. Oh, That's all. Yeah. Okay. Do you get together in any way? Or? Uh, there's not that. <laughs> <laughs> Many of us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You were going to say, uh, I understand that you're writing a book right now. Yeah. Uh, you want to tell us? Well, when, when, you you say, when you say write a book, I'm, I, I draw a book okay. and write the book. I'm doing, okay. I'm doing a, 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 a favorite subject of mine, uh, uh, African American women throughout history. Yeah. And I think it's an overlooked subject. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And a good friend of mine is in that book. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> okay. okay. So you're you're always working. You're doing something all oh, the time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so that's your current yeah. project oh. is, is this particular Yeah. That way I on book. If, if I just keep busy that way, you know, God will say, Well he's so busy I won't take him yet. <laughs> when he gets through <laughs> so I ain't through yet, God. Got no more books. <laughs> You've been quoted as saying that one of the greatest pleasures in life is doing what people say you cannot do. Well, yeah, yeah, and that's isn't that true? I mean, haven't you had that experience? I mean, my whole life, if uh, some things I have done, like when I was a kid, there was no television. Mm -hmm. I've been on television. I just. <laughs> I did an animated show on television, okay. you know, and that's that blows my mind. Mm -hmm. It absolutely blows my mind, you know. You see that as a challenge, then, when somebody says that. Yeah, I've done something I couldn't possibly think of. You've also worked with a lot of nonprofit organizations. Oh yeah. Oh, well, that, my wife used to say, "You just can't say no." <laughs> <laughs> so you've been pretty busy, then. Huh? Well, I'm always. I'm always. The point is. It's not just, uh, I just feel happy that I'm doing, that I can do something that somebody wants. I mean, that's a great feeling. Yes, that's yes. an absolutely great feeling. You know, my wife went to, uh, 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 when I joined the National Cartoon Society, and it was, it was expensive at the time, because okay. we were just getting started. She said, well, what do you want to join the Cartoon Society for? I said, because I'm eligible. <laughs> <laughs> eligible, you know? Okay. How many people are eligible to join the National Car Tennis yeah. Society? Uh, yeah. When was that? When you did that? I joined right away, back in 1965. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. And I'm, you know, anytime there's a cartoon exhibit, I'm, I'm right there, you know? You've received a lot of awards. Oh yeah, I'm career. happy, happy. So, um, I lost a lot was? of them too off the wall. The, Did you? Okay. To the fire, yeah. To the fire? Yeah. What, what was the fire? Uh, the house fire, was. Okay. I had them all and they melted, just melted away. Oh, you had a house fire here? Yeah, And yeah. you lost a lot of your work here? Oh, no, I, I lost a lot of work, but I really missed those. I missed those awards. That was my ego, this was my ego wall. Okay. And tell me I was, I was worth something, yeah. you know. Yeah. Of all the awards that you've received, which ones stand out the most? I know they're all. Well, different. the most most recent one, which I received in May from the National Cartoonist Society, it was called it's called uh, the Milk Caniff, the same guy That's I was talking friend. about. Yes, yeah, yes. Milk Caniff uh, Lifetime Achievement Award. What are you saying, Milt? Milt. M I L T okay. Caniff okay. Lifetime Achievement Award, and that give was given to me by. But, you know, my peers, the cartoonists all over the world. Right. So and then they met, and it's only been given nine times. Mm. Milt himself got the first one. Okay. And uh, Charles Schultz got the second one, I think. So I was the ninth one to receive it. Yeah. So, uh, Are you the only 
African American to receive this award? The only African American to receive any kind of award for the <laughs> National Cartoon oh, Society. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, mean, I had my whole family in there. They hadn't seen so many black people at the night. <laughs> the affair. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Where was that? Was that? It's in, in San Francisco. San Francisco. Yeah. I can't remember the name of okay. the hotel. I can tell you it was on Market Street. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you receive criticism of, of your work, um, how does that make you feel? What do you think about that? Oddly enough, I I uh, uh, I take it very personally, mm -hmm. and I find myself drawing for that person for a few days. You know, oh. that's I know that's ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. But I do. Well, that's what you do. I don't know why I do that. Okay. Because, you know, I don't know where that person's really coming from. Okay. And sometimes uh, you don't know why, what, what motivates that person. Mm -hmm. Like the first cartoon, the very first strip, you got a letter. I got a letter. Uh, I love to tell this story because okay. I got a letter from a, uh, the syndicate got the letter. The guy said, uh, talking about Nipper, you know, Nipper wearing his Confederate hat. Okay. <laughs> and the guy said, no black man in his right mind would wear a Confederate hat. And he said, I suggest that your cartoonists get to know a few black people, you know. And everybody laughed. <laughs> everybody laughed. So I said, you, I don't think that's funny. I don't think it's funny either. I said, you let me call it. Let me respond to that letter. So I wrote him myself. I said, I know two black people, my mother and my father. And I didn't hear from them. <laughs> Ever again. <laughs> Ever again. Okay. I get, you know, and then you get letters from, I used to get a letter from a guy in, in Michigan. He used to scare me to death. He said, and he signed his name, Mr. Mr. White Man with a capital oh. W. And he'd never, he would never say anything about the strip, about my cartoons. He was always telling me about, What's going on here? It's, you know, anything negative about a, in those days they used to in the newspaper would say would describe the person, you know, black person who did who did this, black person who did that, black and He would clip these things out and send them to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And suggest that I pass it on to Ebony magazine when I get through with them. So, but did that, you respond to him? He didn't no no place to respond. Oh, okay. Sometimes you get letters like that. Mm -hmm. I got, a, you know, with no return address. And I got a letter from a woman, who, a black woman, who said that, uh, you know, she, she liked my work, her kids liked her work, and that she, would I write him and encourage him. And then there was no return address. Then I get another letter from her. And I'm basing me for not return, right? Not, and still no <laughs> return address. <laughs> uh, is there anything in your career that you um, haven't done that you would like to do? Anything I'd like to do? I like to learn to tap dance. <laughs> I know just the person to teach me too. Oh, you do. Okay, okay. <laughs> do you want to start those lessons now? <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> What would you say to someone who wanted to become a um, um, cartoonist today? I, I would say, and this is going to be odd, I would say observe, observe things around you. And if you want to go to school, don't go to art school, go to, go to college. Take uh, journalism because that teaches you how to be brief because you're going to have to be very brief. You don't have a lot of time, a lot of space to tell your story. English, take English because that teaches you to, to, to tell a story. Mm -hmm. And take psychology because that'll teach you how to think. And you're going to be doing a lot of thinking. Mm -hmm. And that's another book that I, another place I've used for, for cartoon ideas. Psychology books. Uh, I, you remember the book, I'm Okay, You're Okay? Yeah, well, I do. I got so many so many gags, okay. so many cartoons out of that. It's it's amazing. I hope he writes another book. Okay. <laughs> That'll keep me going for another year. Yeah. Okay. Um, I see that you have some uh, samples of your work. Yeah. This here. is this is. Could you tell us about that? This harkens back to my days with the with the Oakland Symphony and and Calvin Simmons. You remember Calvin Simmons? Yes, I do. He and I used to do uh, was something I was very proud of. He and I used to do the uh, the Weepels 
concert, concert together. together. And he would, he would give me a piece of music and, and he would tape the music. Then he would put little signals in the, in the tape, beep, beep, you know. And the beeps were where the, the, the drawing would go. So I'd listen to the music and decide what the, what the drawings were going to be about. And this was uh, the cakewalk. The music Which was, one is the that? Music was the cakewalk. cakewalk. Yeah. Did you and, and the, the whole whole series was about, oh, about, about yeah, about it was a New Orleans and a, and the song was the cakewalk. And I just came up with all these these drawings as a And there's one up there called Mardi Gras. Yeah. Yeah. What's that one? What's going on there? Well that's part of the cakewalk. Okay. When I said the, the cakewalk was from what they do in, in Louisiana, um Mardi Gras, okay. during the Mardi Gras. Okay. So the cakewalk was part of that. Okay. And I just made these drawings to go along with the music, and and I just happened to like what I did with these, and I just kept kept these aside from from all the rest because they moved me. Okay. I just happened to like. I'm gonna frame those someday. Yeah, they're very colorful, they're pretty. And this was such a this was such a different idea for me, and then my characters. They're all they're all my characters, but it was a, just a different approach. Gave me a chance to do something different. Okay. I didn't. I felt like they were different because because they were about something. Okay. You know, when I did when I did the the television show, it was about humor. There was very little. I did some civil rights things, mm -hmm. but they were minimum. But this was about something. This was this was you know music with the. To be involved with Calvin and um, to teach music, you know, teach an appreciation of music was wow. was was fantastic. And we did that for two years, mm -hmm. two different. Had a whole lot of yeah. what I wanted to do. I never got around to it. Was to put some dialogue and turn them into books. Okay. But I couldn't think of anything meaningful okay. to do. Yeah. A storyline. Maybe I put that on a list of things to do. Okay. God, I got something <laughs> else to do. Something else to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, you seem to keep very busy. I'm sure you'll find something to do. Um, is there anything else that you want to add that you haven't added? That you haven't said? Anything else you'd like to contribute or talk about? No, I have four grandchildren and five <laughs> great grandchildren. <laughs> as of this time. As of <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mr. Maury Turner, the Coalition is proud to honor you as one of the historians in the program Eternal Voices. And I'm happy to be a historian okay. in Eternal Voices. On this um, Wednesday, March 31st, 2004. Thank you very much. Thank you.